Most of you guys focus on all of the things that you can see. A visionary specialized. Only those who can see the invisible can do the impossible. Sometimes, when you have a vision for your life, other people will not have that same vision, so they will pass on you. I'm looking to unleash these visions and ideas on the world. Because the world is an empty canvas waiting on new thought to think. A lot of us are going through a hard time in life. Some people have been bullied. Some people are just stressed out. Some people are insecure. Some people are fat and overweight. And the world puts a lot of this shit in your mind. I had to develop a mindset, a mindset that was indestructible. I had to armor plate my mind. And it's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes with work. So whenever I was getting beat down, physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you know, I would put, you know, you can't hurt me. You can't hurt me just became a message, I, you know, I would say to myself. I'm training people to get into their greatness, to begin to develop the courage to pursue dreams beyond their comfort zones. Because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. When you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are, so you act like you don't have any. And one of the reasons that Booker T. Washington said, judge a person not by what they accomplished, but what they had to overcome for their accomplishment. You know what I think one of the best ways to crack ourselves open from the curse of self-obsession. I find that moments of like radical and sudden empathy, radical and sudden compassion, immediately dissipate all those gnawing thoughts of like self-doubt and self-loathing and self-pity and, and just desire. They're obliterated by this immediate communion with another being. I believe that most human beings are only living at about 40% of their capability. There's something about the mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over it at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. Your life's all about feelings. You want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. Why am I here? And you don't have any, you know, so, so you can't answer those questions, so you leave. I started realizing that if in that moment you can answer those questions and you are now in charge of your brain versus your brain ruling you. I tell people, you're gonna face tough times. You know, my favorite book says, Think it not strange if you face the fiery furnaces of this world. But I affirm, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. Not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. dictate your thoughts, dictate your emotions, dictate your actions, which produce your results. And your results, when you look at them, then just reinforce the original belief. And so we're caught in that construct, right? But the linchpin is the belief system. So the question is, how do I actually change what I believe? If my beliefs really do dictate my destiny, right? Which is, I'm not the only person suggesting that. The question becomes, how do I change my beliefs? And in that is, is an inherent challenge because by definition, beliefs are that which are true. That collect ideas, not beliefs. If you collect ideas, right, it means that you're like, oh, that's interesting, and then that's interesting, and then this is interesting, and then that's also interesting. And some of these contradict each other, but it's okay because I don't have to believe any of them. I can just entertain their feasibility and find them interesting. So I can collect all these different ideas. The problem with beliefs is that when you collect one belief, well, you knock offline any belief that contradicts that particular. Stuck with your beliefs, you narrow your worldview. If you know that at 40%, I'm still, you know, I'm feeling pain. At 40%, I'm feeling pain. 
that's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts, okay, I'm feeling pain, my mind's saying all this shit to me. It's saying get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things, you start to believe it, because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back in your mind. It's okay, let me see if I can go 45%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, what, what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. I wish I had not waited 14 years. Somebody said, if you want to lose something, lose money. You can get that back, but don't lose time. There were 14 years I sat on the sideline. 14 yeah. years I said, I don't have an investor in me like Tony Robbins. 14 years it said, I don't have an MBA or PhD and, and I can't compete with these guys. I have the complexion of rejection. 14 years. I silenced myself. Yeah. And so I regret that because there are some people that maybe if they'd heard my voice, their lives would have taken a different direction. And I can't get those 14 years back. You know, I, I kind of want to just put trust. Like, look, all the great things in my life have not happened when I was looking for them. All the great things in my life, all the success in my life mm -hmm. always happened when I was in my zone, doing my art, doing my thing, and the right thing showed up, and all I did was seize it when it was there. When I get stuck thinking, planning, what's worrying about what's the next thing, I'm out of my flow. And it's when literally I'm not thinking about it, and I'm just trusting that the thing has showed up and that I've seized it. Often people don't know how to achieve something. Because they don't know how, they don't spend a lot of time getting additional clarity. They don't spend time imagining what the future would look like with that thing or being that thing or creating that thing because they get stuck on the how. And what I would suggest is that if you're willing to invest time in getting clearer around something or imagining, you build neural networks that represent the memory of an experience that has not happened yet. You have greatness in you. I don't know you, but here's what I know based upon my own experience. You have greatness in you, that you have the ability to do more than you could ever begin to imagine. With that voice that a lot of us like to run away from, we all have it. We all have that voice that's saying, hey man, you know, you're, you're kind of wimping out right now. Goggins is saying, okay, David Goggins, you're a punk. Life made you this way. We can't live like this. We can't live in fear. We can't live in judgment. Cannot be afraid of that. That's Goggins. Goggins saying, all of you who don't like me, who don't want it, and that person then comes in. But you have to be David Goggins and say, man, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of here. Life made me this way here. You have to face that in that dark room. In that dark room is who you are. But in that dark room is where you have to create another human being that walks out of that dark room. As you think about yourself, a reminder of the words of Howard Thurman, who said, there's a presence in each and every one of us that waits and listens to the voice of the genuine in yourself. It will be perhaps the only God you will ever have or hear. And if you cannot hear it, all of your life will be spent on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. When you recognize your greatness, no one will ever pull your strings.